Okay, I want to talk about something I get asked a lot about as a driver, professional truck driver, and that is why are there so many accidents and why is traffic always so shitty? What's going on here? Everybody wants to know what's happening. And a lot of people <clears throat> will just say, well, it's the new Canadians. That's the fancy words that they like to use instead of outright saying tackies because that's what they're referring to particularly of the uh, um, Punjabi province Punjabi peoples um, and it's, it's, a, it's an erroneous statement and I'm going to explain exactly and clearly why it's an erroneous statement because Although new Canadians, and I'll use that term to be polite, tend to be involved in a lot of these incidences, they're not the only ones. There is an incident, some people may be aware of it, if you're from Canada, you're probably almost definitely aware of it, a uh, Humboldt bus crash uh, last year. Recently, the individual pleaded guilty to the offense. The individual was a professional driver, new Canadian, new driver. Um, and in the hearing where he pled guilty, there was some information that came out about this person. Now, some people were saying, well, you know, this is a problem within the industry and it's not just in North America, it's around the world in different places. Because these people come over from these poorer countries, they get promised all this great stuff, that a great living and everything else, if they come over and they become a truck professional driver. Uh, I believe Britain's gone through this, gone through this twice now, and they're trying it again with different areas around the world for a third time, trying to bring in, they'll call them suckers, to go out in the roads and believe they're going to make lots of money, and it's many people actually make less than minimum wage as a professional driver getting paid by the mile or something. So there was kind of a, a sympathetic view at first about how this guy might be getting screwed over and he might be, although at fault, it's not totally his fault. In the hearing that came out, what was exposed is that the road conditions were fine, the roads were clear and dry, the visibility was perfect, uh, 20 miles plus visibility, the sun was not in his eyes, so condition-wise, environmental-wise, there was no reason that would have affected him such as icy roads or poor visibility or anything like that. He had passed four warning signs saying that there was a stop sign up ahead, an intersection up ahead with a stop sign, da 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 And a, the final one, the fifth one that he went through was a stop sign that was four feet wide by four feet high with a flashing red light on top of it. So this individual had run the red light, or had run the, the stop sign. Uh, for those who aren't aware of this, the bus crash ended up killing, I can't remember, 30-something people. He drove into a, a bus of uh, hockey players, a hockey team, killing, I think, I, I think the number was 38, but I'm not sure, including the bus driver. When he went through the stop sign, he had gone through the stop sign at 90 kilometers an hour. So he didn't even slow down. Speed limit in the area was probably 80 if it was a side road like I'm thinking it was. 80 kilometers an hour. So he's doing 10 over. All right, we'll give him that one. That's not too extreme. He missed four warning signs, refused to stop at the stop sign, and blasted through at full speed. And his training, he was new on the job, 
brand new trucker and his training consisted of about three weeks, uh, if I heard correctly, uh, a week of CDL training and then two weeks of uh, driving for the company with somebody else in the seat beside him. In that three weeks, he had 70 moving violations. So this guy should not have even been on a road. He was blatantly disregarding and ignoring safety procedures and safety protocol. Whether you believe in, in government having the authority or right to be able to tell you what to do or what not to do or otherwise, I mean, if there's a stop sign up ahead, because it's a controlled intersection and they're trying to, somebody's controlling the traffic. I don't give a shit if it's in a freaking private parking lot in a mall. There's a stop sign. You fucking stop because that's what they want. The, the individual who's responsible for the safety of that intersection wants you to do. That might be an always stop. It might be a one side stop, you know, going east and west on a north south intersection, whatever. You drive within controls and speeds of which you're capable of operating. These are all things that this individual blatantly demonstrated he had no respect for, no regards for. So that's one individual, and that's what kind of sparks this again, and this attempt at perhaps answering the question as to why this happens. Why earlier this week there was a 70 car pileup in the 400 north just south of Barrie? why in Montreal there was a truck, trans, two transports that collided, one rear-ending the other, killing one of them. Uh, well, it's, it's all the same thing. This is even going to explain why when you're going into the cities, and I drive frequently along the 401 uh, roadway through and into and out of GTA, the General Toronto, Greater Toronto Area, which is the busiest section of highway in all of North America. Los Angeles, uh, New York, nowhere, nowhere compares to this. And you can look it up online, do some checking out. 401 in the GTA area is the busiest roadway in all of North America. And why traffic is only doing 5, 10, 20 kilometers an hour on a 100 kilometer an hour speed uh, road. And there's a very important reason for that. And it's not just new Canadians, it's a pandemic around the globe of, of commercial drivers and private drivers and, and, and uh, whatever you want to call these people four wheelers and, and 18 wheelers and, and 28 wheelers whatever alike they're all the same thing now not every individual is like that but it's at such a preposterous rate that when you find somebody that's not like that it, it, it's a it's almost a freak of nature like where did this guy come from and I say that term gender neutral. The fact is, nobody gives a fuck about anything anymore except themselves. They're so egocentric, so self-centered, and so fucking ignorant of others around them that they can't even drive with a proper spacing between them for the, for the speed of travel they're doing so they can safely stop. People are trying to merge onto the highway. Well, if everybody's coming onto the on-ramp at the flow of the traffic in the outside lane and the outside lane is leaving space between the vehicles for other traffic to merge into, traffic would flow fine. It may not do the 100 kilometer speed limit. It might only do 70 or 80, but it would do a hell of a lot faster than fucking five. That's first and foremost, ignorance of other people around them. And, and it's, it's not just new Canadians as everybody wants to say. It's not just four wheelers. I mean, they're just freaking retarded. Everybody trying to get in and cut in and out, and weaving in and out, and want to get that one car length ahead. Because the only person they think about is themselves. Maybe they're on their way to a sales meeting. Maybe they're late for work, whatever. It's probably dollar driven. 99.9% of everything in this fucking world nowadays is dollar driven. But they only give a shit about themselves. They don't give a shit about the transport they cut off. They don't give a shit about the other four wheelers they're cutting off. 
They don't give a shit if they're causing everybody else behind them to have to stop so long as they get ahead. It's, it's egotism at a massive scale, ignorance of other people around you on a huge level. And, it, and it's just, it just baffles my brain. That's what's going on. As far as these people that are saying it's new Canadians, I've watched new Canadians drive on a road. I've watched, I've watched from you know all different cultures and races and different things. I've seen new drivers who are just coming up with it, getting their CDL and trying to develop their experience. And yes, okay, like everybody else, when you're new, you're not you're not perfect. You're you're going a little slow maybe because you're cautious, you're scared, you're you're. Um, Maybe you're in the wrong lane. I mean, if you're on a six lane highway, three lanes going one way, three lanes going the other way, that fucking middle lane is for the trucks to pass. The outside lane is where you should be if you're going slow. And when I say slow, I'm not being rude and ignorant saying, oh, the guy's doing 80 kilometers an hour or 70 kilometers an hour in a hundred zone. Some people are doing that, yeah. Some trucks might be doing that because of the weight and load restrictions that we're trying to get up to speed. Other trucks might be doing that because the company has governed them to 90 kilometers an hour and that's the fastest they can go. And if that's you, if that's your situation, you should be staying in that lane until you need to pass somebody. If you're going to be trying to fly by everybody in, a, in your car, get in the friggin' left-hand lane on the inside lane. That's where the morons who are doing 140, 160 belong. The only reason to be in the middle lane is if you're passing somebody. And I had a situation here happen. Uh, I think it was last year, or not sure, maybe the year before. Where I'm in the middle lane, I'm in speed limits 105. I blew that shit. Speed limits, speed limits 100, I'm doing 105. I'm, Pinned in my governed limit, and I'm passing all these trucks that are doing 90, 95 kilometers an hour. And every time I got past one, this guy behind me kept trying to veer in in the left inside on the, on the right hand lane and get, get, get by me. He was getting pissed off. He, uh, he'd get halfway up my, my trailer and he'd have to slip, put on his brakes, slow down, and, and go to the back and pull in behind me again because he couldn't get past me. And he was getting frustrated. When I finally got through past this line of trucks, knowing this guy wanted to buy me, I checked my right hand mirrors, everything was clear. I was in front of, far enough in front of the other trucks that I wasn't cutting them off, the last truck that I passed. I hit my signal, I rechecked, they started to pull over, and the moron behind me was trying to get, jump in on the right hand side, the right hand lane and cut me off. And passing me on the right hand side. I was in front of him and halfway in the lane, so I just continued. Got into my got into the lane and, and recovered over the outside lane so that he could get past me. <laughs> and he immediately swings to the left hand lane, into the passing lane. Pounds on the speed. I don't know what he was, speed he was traveling. It was an American license plate. So he may not have been governed at all. I'm not sure. But in Ontario and on all provinces in Canada, commercial trucks are supposed to be governed at night at uh, 105 kilometers an hour maximum. Companies can volunteer to be governed for less, but maximum they're allowed to go is 95 kilometers an hour. So this guy was obviously not doing 90, uh, or 105 kilometers, or, sorry, this guy was obviously not doing 105. I guesstimate he was doing something more like 120. I just had to slow down there, there's a tight corner and trucks over the stop line and I just looked at his mirror, oh, we got by him, okay. <coughs> and when he got by me, he was so pissed off at me, wailing on his air horn, screaming out the window at me, 
and he swung in in front of me. Well, he didn't even swing in in front of me. He swung in at me and drove me off the road. I had to take the shoulder to avoid getting hit from him. Like, and what was he? Was he a new Canadian? No, he was a white guy with a shitty attitude in a rush to get somewhere for no reason, probably paid by the fucking mile, making 50 cents or buck 50, whatever an hour or a mile that he's making if he's a broker. And he's trying to fucking kill people because he can't get where he wants to get 10 minutes earlier, four minutes earlier. You're doing 105 kilometers an hour, you're going 100 kilometers, you're gonna get 100 kilometers fucking two minutes sooner or something retarded like that. The difference in time is not worth dying for and it's not worth killing someone else for. The fact is, and this is plain and simple, until people wake the fuck up and they start fucking respecting other people, they start saying, fuck, I don't give a shit if I'm late for work. It's only another fucking two bucks I'm going to lose or five bucks. I'm gonna lose. It's not fucking important. It's not relevant. It's, it, people's safety, other respect for other people is the paramount thing that we should be concerned about. Until that happens, and I'm just talking driving here. I'm not talking other things. I'm just talking on the road driving. Until people start respecting other people learn to sit in a fucking traffic jam because they're going to continue to smack into each other because these fucking idiots, white guys, black guys, brown guys, fucking all these guys who don't give a shit about anybody else and they don't give a shit about nothing except themselves getting ahead of everybody else and being first in that fucking line. Don't let anybody else in. Don't leave any space for anybody to merge. No, no, I got to get ahead. So if I let him merge, then he'll be in front of me. I can't let that happen fucking idiots until people start respecting each other on the roads and, as, and again this is just one aspect people got to start respecting each other in a lot more means than just on top on the roads when they're driving we're fucked and and you know in, in regards to to my political views and my spiritual views on that to, I, people that want to see freedom People who want to, to, to have real freedom, have government step out of their lives and leave them the fuck alone. The only way that's ever going to happen, I'll tell you right now, is through anarchy. No government, no masters, no slaves, everybody's fucking equal. And the only way that's going to happen is unless and until people wake the fuck up, start respecting each other, and, and, and start treating each other like brothers and sisters and treating each other as equals. And if I don't like what you think or what you say or how you live, I don't come after you and assault you and harass you saying you got to live the way I live. I walk away from you and I leave you alone. You can live your life over there. You can live your life in peace. You can even be my neighbor living right next door to me. And if you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. And if that's the case, we don't need no governments. We don't need no fucking fascists calling themselves cops. We don't need anything. That's the first thing we need is respect for each other. The second thing we need is that when somebody else does get get hurt, something else does happen, somebody else is being uh, infringed upon, we back them up. Don't have to like the guy, don't have to agree with what he believes in, but he has the right to be left alone, he has the right to live in peace. So if somebody's just harassing him and not allowing him to live in peace, we back them up out of love for them. Out of godly love, out of agape love, out of respect for them, hoping and both trusting that if the situation was reversed, they would back us up. When people learn to live like that, people learn to just walk away from the government, stop voting, stop participating, stop going to these thugs calling themselves bankers, asking for loans, Stop asking for fucking fascists calling themselves government to, to, to implement special rules so that our interests can be protected or our safety can be protected or whatever the hell else it is that nobody's really doing that's bothering you in any way. In fact, in reality, in fact, in reality, nobody's doing anything that's bothering you in any way. If they were doing something that was bothering you in any way, 
you would know about it directly. You would be affected by it. And if you're going to sit there and allow it to happen, then you're a fucking moron in the first place. Because self-defense, man. Every, everybody has the right to self-defense. And, and every country and every nation I know of in the world has that written somewhere within their laws. Somewhere within their laws, that's written. Because it's, 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 it's a natural unalienable right granted to you by the creator who however you want to define that however you understand that to be is irrelevant the creator gave you the right to defend yourself it gave every living creature on this planet the right to defend itself don't believe me go into the woods and provoke a badger or a bear they'll never bother you in a thousand years until you go into the woods and start provoking them. And then look out. We've all heard about bear attacks. They don't happen out of the blue. Bears don't just randomly come into the city, grab somebody, and go, oh, look, I want to eat this person and kill them. No, that never happens. It's always the person going out of his way to provoke and attack the bear that causes the bear to defend itself. Natural, unalienable right, granted to the bear by nature, granted to every living species by nature, including yourself. So if you're too lazy to fucking defend yourself, then, then it's your own fault. You deserve to get trampled on. If you're unable to defend yourself, that's a different story. But you don't need cops. Cops will never show up on time. They'll, they'll be there to write a report. They'll be there to, to help the fucking coroner tag the body. That's all cops do. You're fucking useless pieces of shit. So first and foremost, learn to respect each other. Secondly, learn to defend and protect each other. Thirdly, learn to defend and protect yourself. Or maybe the second and third can be twitched around. Either way. Either way. Self-defense, self-defense of yourself, uh, of your person, self-defense of your neighbors, uh, helping your neighbors. If your neighbor, you know, I mean, forever, forever. If, if the neighbor's house caught on fire, they didn't send out smoke signals or something looking for somebody to come help. No, they, they all got together. They all put the fire out together as a community, as a group. I'm not saying fire departments are necessarily a bad idea, but anytime I've needed them, and they've showed up again, it's already the situation's under control, everything's all over. You know, want to go around or make a report, knock yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all my, my, my neighbor. One situation, I had a, I had a, started a grease fire in a mobile home that I was living in. And <laughs> if you're, you know anything about them, they, man, they go quick. So, trying to get it under control, and, and I couldn't, couldn't get it under control. I tried everything I could think of. I'm, I'm searching the house for a fire extinguisher. There's no fire extinguisher within the house. So I'm like, screw this, you know what? The house burns down, the house burns down. I'm going out, I ran across the street and asked the neighbor if he had a fire extinguisher. He's like, yeah, why? I said, I need it now. He looks across the street, sees smoke coming out of the, uh, all the windows of the house. He gives me his fire extinguisher, I ran back across the street, put the fire out. I, was, I think I was about 20 then, you know, less than one alert was, if I can have a fire extinguisher handy by the kitchen. And, you know, <laughs> 10, 10, 15 minutes later, along comes the fire department. <laughs> Driving up and down looking for a freaking fire. <laughs> Situation's already under control. They went in, they cleaned it up for me, and they freaking wrote a report for the insurance company. It's all the fire department. My neighbor helped. My neighbor come streaming across the street to me looking for a fire extinguisher or something I could help him, I would. We all need to think like that. We all need to help each other. We don't need to just take pictures of it. 
video it, whatever. We need to get involved. We need to be active. We need to help each other in every way we can. You know, like police brutality, you see the police beating up on somebody you think it's inappropriate? Beat up on the police. Gang up on them. They're doing it to us. Fuck them. They got no special rights granted to them by God. They got non-existent imaginary uh, fucking special authorities because they're fucking special people, all right? You know what I mean by that one? So the special people that took the fucking special bus to school, that's what the cops are. And they're the ones that were too stupid to actually fucking make something of themselves. A lot of those kids on that special bus grew up and learned to make something out of themselves. Even still, cops didn't. Well, the stupid people believe they have special authority granted to them by special people calling and considering themselves God getting elected every four years or whatever. It's a whole bullshit system. And the people that sit there and say, well, God put them in place. Really? Really? Romans 13, God put government in place. That's what it says? I'm pretty sure I read that myself. Pretty sure I studied it pretty deeply, and I'm pretty sure I used to get Bible lessons and adult Sunday classes on it, and I'd get thrown out because they didn't like what I had to say because I would read the actual original Greek translations of the Greek words to them, and it doesn't say government. Nowhere in there does it say government. It says authorities and powers, and it's referring to authorities, spiritual authorities, and spiritual powers. Not physical authorities and physical powers. It's got nothing to do with government. Man put government into place. Man who is too lazy, too ignorant, and too stupid to want to take responsibility for their own actions. People who are too ignorant to respect each other. And they think that if we just go around living like this, and then when something goes wrong, we get the cops involved, and then that person goes to jail like this guy that's going to happen in, 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 from the Humboldt, Saskatchewan bus crash. He's going to jail. We don't know how long, but... He pled guilty to multiple counts of uh, vehicular manslaughter. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty much a jail time anywhere I'm familiar with. You know, that doesn't solve the problem. People are still dead. People are still dead because of some ignorant fuck. And I don't give a shit about the color of his skin. I don't give a shit if he was just a new driver or not. He was an ignorant fuck who, for whatever reason, wasn't paying attention to the road, wasn't doing whatever he was doing, wasn't checking his mirrors, wasn't reading the signs, wasn't pulling over and driving in accordance with the rules of the road. I don't give a shit what some constable says, says that the police department did not laws, the rules of the road and the rules of the road because they're fucking procedures that everybody follows, so that works. Everybody in North America drives on the right-hand side of the road. You're in Britain or maybe Australia or somewhere else, you drive on the left-hand side of the road, fine. On that country, in that country, in that environment, you drive on the left-hand side of the road. I've been to the UK. Yes, I did drive on the left-hand side of the road. It was weird. But it kept me safe because I wasn't driving into head-on traffic. Get your head out of your ass, people. Wake up. Start looking at what you're doing wrong and not what other people are doing wrong. Start looking at how, at how ignorant you're being and how, how disrespectful you're being. To, to not only to others, but to yourself too, because you're putting your own life in danger. You obviously have no, you don't give a shit about yourself. You're gonna act like that. Obviously do not give a shit about yourself. If you're gonna act like that. I, I, it just baffles me. But that's my answer. Ignorance. Ego. Ego. Out of control ego. Me, 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 me. No respect for selves, no respect for others. Ignorance and arrogance. That's the reason all this shit's happening, all these accidents are happening, and everything else. So nobody cares about anybody else. Nobody will, will help protect anybody else when they're on the roads you know I mean every now and then you'll see a trucker that will block traffic so another truck can get onto the, onto the highway or something or can get over and off the highway do whatever he needs to do but you know they have this imaginary fucking law in North America, in Canada here in Ontario here 
where, where it says pull over or slow down. It's not both, it's one or the other, pull over or slow down for emergency vehicles. Well, when they say emergency vehicles, they mean they don't want you killing their stupid psychopathic cops. But if you see a vehicle on the side of the road, period, I don't care if it's a truck, it's four-wheeler, what it is, if somebody's on the side of the road because they got a problem, maybe they're making a cell phone call, they're lost, whatever the reason is, it doesn't matter. Maybe they're going to get out of the car or check something that you think they might have a flat tire or something's making a noise. Get over. So courtesy, common courtesy and respect. Get out of the way. Let them freaking do what they got to do. I don't know how many times I've been on the side of the road trying to deal with something with a truck, with a flatbed, loose strap or something, you know, something's going wrong with the load and I got to deal with it. And I got nowhere to pull over except the side of the road. And people almost fucking hit me because they won't give space. They're so fucking egotistical and arrogant. And then they want to know why they're stuck in traffic. Uh, maybe it's because there's a dead trucker up ahead because some asshole wouldn't fucking pull over 10 feet to give him, to give the driver room to, to do what he's doing. Instead, he, he decided he was going to speed up, see if he beat that car that's coming at him, and oops, he clipped the driver and killed him. Now the road's shut down and you're going to sit there for fucking 12 hours. And don't look and say it's just that other person because you would have done the same damn thing and you know it. Just because it didn't happen to you doesn't make you special. Your attitude's the same. I think that's all I got to say about that. People's excessive ego, people's fucking lack of respect both for themselves and for others. People's excessive dependence on a nanny state to protect them. They never can. Laws don't protect people. Never been any law I've ever seen that stops a crime. It's only given justification for a report to be written up after the fact. Rape victims are still raped, murdered victims are still murdered. Dead people on the side of the road because some asshole ran a stop sign full speed, didn't even try and slow down, didn't even notice it, wasn't paying any attention to shit around them, are still dead people. And throwing that man in jail ain't gonna do a goddamn thing, so there's no point in screaming and asking for life sentence, saying in multiple sentences. Stack them on top of each other. Never let that guy... It's not going to do any good. All it's going to do is they're going to steal money out of my pocket again, further, in the form of what they call taxation, to feed the fucking guy. You want know, justice? He pled guilty? Throw him in a ring with the family members of the fucking dead people. We'll let them deal with it. Whatever happens when he comes, when he, at the end of it, give him 30 minutes. Whatever happens at the end of it, it's the end of it. If he's alive, he's alive. If he's dead, he's dead. Not your problem, not your concern. They're the ones that got hurt, not you. You want real justice? That would be real justice. Let the injured parties deal with it. Stop asking for fucking... Papa state to fucking punish them. The bad doings. Nanny state and the Papa state. And the you guys are fucking retarded. Just make me sick. Anyways, yeah, that's that's it for now. I'm done. Have a good day. Drive safe. Be respectful. Be courteous. And stay alive.